So what should we know about type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and cardiovascular risk? So cardiovascular disease, it's really a group of diseases, and this basically affects the heart and the blood vessels. So cardiovascular disease, it includes heart and blood vessel problems, and it includes narrowing or blockages of the blood vessels in the heart, the arms and legs, the abdominal organs, and the brain. And when we think about arms and legs, but really this is what we're referring to, peripheral vascular disease. Uh, it can it can cause abnormal heart rhythms, heart failure, and more. So cardiovascular disease is really a really broad term, but elevated blood sugar, uncontrolled diabetes, it can affect all of these in, in a negative way. And so these patients are, or these people are at increased risk of stroke, heart attack, and cardiac death, and blood clots due to these, um, due to these complications. So do you have risk factors for cardiovascular disease? So smoking, vaping, type 2 diabetes, the lack of exercise in that sedentary lifestyle, obesity, poor family history, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, all these lead to increased cardiovascular risk. Looking at cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular risk amongst African Americans compared to non-Hispanic whites and non-Hispanic blacks, African Americans are 30% more likely to die from heart disease, 30% more likely to have high blood pressure. They're less likely to have their blood pressure under control. They're more likely to be smokers, more likely to be affected by obesity. One good thing, less likely to have high cholesterol. But when you look at this, these disparities in this risk, it really lets us know the importance of this. And it really is an opportunity for us to really intervene, step in, not just for ourselves, but also for our family members to see if we really can try to reduce some of these risks. So reducing cardiovascular risk, it really does require a comprehensive approach. Lifestyle management, blood pressure management. How often do we hear people who say, oh, my blood pressure is always high. Just because the blood pressure is always high, it doesn't mean it's safe. It can be very dangerous. And again, it can lead to strokes, lead to heart attacks, lead to renal failure, all these things. So we really want to make sure that the blood pressure is managed. Cholesterol management, blood glucose management, all these things together are going to come and they're going to reduce that cardiovascular risk. So exercise, diet, weight control, reducing alcohol, reducing smoking, all those are going to have a positive impact um, on that lifestyle. Doing medication, if you need to do medication to keep that blood pressure control, then it's the best thing to do. Everyone, many people are so concerned about the side effects of medication, but I always say the side effects of uncontrolled diabetes, uncontrolled blood pressure, and uncontrolled cholesterol are going to be strokes, heart attacks, and death. And so you really want to weigh those options when people, when you don't want to take medications. Lifestyle is going to be very important. Um, looking at lifestyle modification and medication when it comes to cholesterol. You know, looking at the cholesterol that's in our bloodstream is not just what our body makes, but it's also what we eat. And so it would make sense to reduce the amount of, of animal protein and animal fat that we're getting as a means of, of lowering the cholesterol. Exercising is also going to help to lower that cholesterol. And again, exercise has no side effects and better dietary choices has no side effects. So those are all things, things that we can incorporate with medications to keep that cholesterol control. Blood glucose management is going to be important. So again, GLP-1 receptor agonist, that's a wonderful class of medications that has actually been shown to lower the risk of cardiovascular disease in patients. So have you been prescribed a medication for type 2 diabetes that lowers your cardiovascular risk? And this is a really important question. When you're looking at rates, racial ethnic disparities in the use of GLP-1 receptor agonists and FGLT2 inhibitors. Look at these numbers. So looking at the GLP-1 receptor agonists, uh, looking at patients that are on them, 28.5% of, of white patients, 19.8% of black patients, 21.3% of Hispanic, and 5.9% of Asians. So looking at this wonderful class, all of this benefit, and we see that Looking at um, black patients, they're only at 19.8%. This is a significant disparity, again, because remember, reflecting back on the previous slides, we're at higher risk for cardiovascular death, higher risk for heart failure, higher risk for stroke compared to our white and Hispanic um, uh, patients. So looking at this, this is something that, that really leads us to understand that this is something that we do need to talk about more. We need, you know, when we look at, at, at blacks and we look at whites, Hispanics, we're all working. We all have good health insurance. There's no reason that we shouldn't be getting the benefit of these better medications. Looking at SGLT2 inhibitors and who's on this and who's not. 
looking at white patients, 7%, 4.7 for black patients, 6.5 for Hispanic, and 1.2 for Asian. So again, very beneficial class. This is a medication that typically almost all of my diabetics are going to be on a GLP-1 receptor agonist or a GLP-1 GIP receptor agonist, or they're going to be on an SGLT-2 inhibitor because I see the benefit. I see the benefit when it comes to weight, when it comes to cardiovascular disease, renal, renal disease, when it comes to stroke and heart attack. All these things are important. Um, I emphasize to my patients, it's not the elevation of the blood sugar that, that gets you. It's going to be all the complications. And layering in an SGLT-2 or layering in a GLP-1 is really going to lower that risk of complications. So you should be asking your doctor specifically, you know, if you don't know the classes of medications that you're on, am I on a GLP-1 receptor agonist? Am I on an SGLT2 inhibitor? And if you're not, and this is something that you pursue, you have to be your best advocate because at the end of the day, we're responsible for our own care. So knowing your numbers, knowing that hemoglobin A1C is going to be checked every two to three months, as I said before, the target is going to be less than seven or less than 6.5, um, depending on the guidelines. That BMI, knowing that BMI, looking at waist waist circumference, looking at that weight, making sure that things are always moving in the right direction or that you're maintaining. Looking at that blood pressure, that blood pressure is going to be really important. So I do emphasize that my patients check their blood pressure at home. Bring those logs in when you're going to your doctor so that they can see how that blood pressure is doing, not just when you're in the office, but also when you're at home on a day-to-day, when you're at work. Keep an eye on that blood pressure because it's going to have a big impact on how you do long-term cholesterol levels. Looking at those lipids, these should be measured at least once a year, sometimes more often if we're adjusting therapy. So again, looking at the LDL, which is the bad cholesterol, the HDL, which is the good cholesterol, and the triglycerides. And all of these numbers are not only affected by medications. Lifestyle modification is also the key. Exercise is going to help that blood pressure. It's going to help that weight come down. It's going to help that LDL come down, help that HDL, which is the good cholesterol come up. And it's going to lower that A1C. So it's not just about medications. It's also about doing your part and really layering in that lifestyle modification. So key takeaways. So type 2 diabetes is more common and more likely to lead to complications in African-American patients. This is multifactorial as to why. You know, it may be access to medications. It may be access to good information. It could be just the perception of using uh, using certain medications when it comes to diabetes. And in some cases, it just could be just the, the approach that African-Americans that we have to diabetes. Well, you know, my aunt had diabetes. My mom had diabetes. I'm going to have diabetes. Those attitudes and that type of, of thinking really needs to go out of the window. There's so much that we can do before we even get to the diabetes stage or the uncontrolled diabetes stage that we really need to start uh, to take ownership of and take into account. Type 2 diabetes increases the risk of cardiovascular disease, heart attack, stroke, and heart failure. I always tell my patients, you are not going to die of elevated blood sugar. It's going to be strokes and heart attacks. Those are the complications that we really have to be looking out for. Reducing cardiovascular risk requires management of lifestyle, blood pressure, cholesterol, weight, and blood glucose. All these things are going to be important. Lifestyle modification has no side effects. Medications that reduce cardiovascular risk, such as GLP-1 receptor agonists and SGLT-2 inhibitors, are highly recommended for patients with type 2 diabetes. Reflecting back on the, reflecting back on the slides that I saw before, the percentage of diabetes Uh, The percentage of diabetics that are on these medications is low. These should really be the gold standard. These should, when I, again, when a patient comes to my practice, if they're not on a GLP-1 receptor agonist, if they're not on an SGLT2 inhibitor, over the next few visits, I'm going to plan on layering these medications in. I'm going to explain to my patients why it's so beneficial. And they're going to understand that we are really working as a team. We're working as a team to really prevent the complications down the line. I tell my patients, we're not just worried about diabetes for today or for, you know, for next week. We're really thinking about diabetes and, and the lack of complications 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line. So you really do want to get a doctor that you can work with, that you can talk to, that you can understand, because these things are going to help you have your best journey um, with diabetes ultimately. And that's what we want. 